Hello everyone, myself Professor Shiburaj. Today I will be teaching you how to install GCC in a Windows operating system. We will be using a popular port of GCC in Windows called the Mink W. So let's begin. So we start with searching for Mink W installer and uh, you should see this particular link that is Ming W minimalist GNU for Windows download you can click on that and download the link wait for the download to finish you may download it anywhere in your folder so I will be downloading it on the Windows desktop folder once it is downloaded we will start the setup you will click install and this is the default location where MingW is going to be installed click continue and this process will take now around five minutes to complete uh, as per uh, depends on your internet connection So the installation is done. Now this is actually the pre-installation. So it has downloaded the necessary uh, uh, initial files that is required. Now we will click on continue. New. You can see this window that is coming up. So here you have to select what all libraries that you want MingW to install. So here I'm going to select the base Ming32 Ming W32 base installation, then the GCC compiler, and let's also select Objective C. And once that is done, then I will click on installation apply changes. Once this is done, it will ask for apply to download the necessary files and now just wait for the compiler to be downloaded so after the download is finished this is how the screen looks and click on close so now our compiler is installed now just to check just to show you where it is installed you can see we have a new folder in your C drive in your C drive called MingW this is where we have installed this is around 283 MB that has been downloaded so here you can see all the um, folders and this is where our compiler is so this is our compiler GCC compiler Okay, now once this Ming W is installed, this is installed locally. That means whenever we want to compile any program, we will have to come to this directory and then compile our programs. So this is a bit of inconvenience. So what we are going to do is we are going to um, edit the environment variables so that this is globally identified. So let's begin by opening your control panel. Click on open up your settings. So this is the Windows settings. You can start searching for environment variables. Click on edit system environment variables. This opens. Click on environment variables. And in the system variables, you just have to go to the location where the path variable is there double click that 
and here is where you have to add the path of your GCC so this is our GCC so just copy this path and add a new entry click OK done so now I can open up my command prompt CMD and here I can type GCC minus minus version and you should see the version that is installed that is 6.3.0 so now this is available globally so now to test our compiler what we can do is we can create a, a simple C program to print something so let's go to the desktop and create a file let's say hello dot C and I create create the file let's write a simple program let's say hash include stdio dot h int main return zero and printf hello world save it close it and now to compile this we simply have to say gcc hello.c and if I press enter now before I press enter I would like to show you what all files are there on my desktop so if I just put dir you will see there is this installer that I have created uh, that that I downloaded then there are some folders and this is what my file is saved as hello.c now let me clear the screen cls cls and now let me compile it gcc to compile it is simply gcc and the name of the file that you want to compile so gcc hello.c and enter now if there are no errors that means your program has been compiled successfully and now if I do a simple dir again you should see one more file over here so it's called a.exe so that is our output of the program so if I want to execute it I would simply write a.exe and enter and it shows me hello world so our compiler is working properly now let us see how to add some other parameters to the GCC compiler so that it can follow the NC standards currently it is following the C11 standard so let us begin now before I start I would like the output to be stored in the file named hello.exe and not a.exe so for that the flag that is used is minus o and the file name hello.exe so now the difference is that when I compile and if I do dir you will see the file is outputted as hello.exe now to compile it it is hello.exe enter and we get hello world so that is perfect now this is fine but now if I want to follow the ANSI standards so simply I just have to put a fag after at the end that is ANSI and press enter and it compiles now to test whether it is actually following an ANSI standard just edit the file let's open the hello.c program again and in ANSI standards we don't have this sort of a comment 
double slash single line comments is not there so if I try to save this and compile it again without the ANSI standards it would compile successfully but if I compile with ANSI standards it gives me an error so it says C++ style comments are not allowed in C90 so we have successfully changed our standard to ANSI now there are few more flags that I, I usually add onto my programs uh, I will show you one by one the first one is W all so this shows me all the different types of warnings along with the errors now to show you how it works I'll just open the notepad again I'll just remove this and I will add a variable over here int a is equal to 10 so now I have declared a variable and initialized it to a value 10 but I have not used it anywhere in the program so now let us compile this close the file compile it and if I compile it it doesn't give me any errors or warnings as such so if I add this W all it shows me that there is a warning it is saying unused variable a so so this is a very important flag to help us optimize our code a little bit so next flag that I usually add is pedantic errors so now to show you what this how uh, this is going to help me in find uh, st now this I will slightly change the program a little bit to show you how pedantic errors helps now pedantic errors is normally used to strictly follow the NC standards like for example if I uh, if I declare a variable over here and let let me print it over here just so that I don't get uh, the error multi a and now I'm going to declare another variable let's say D or uh, let's say X is equal to 5 so now this statement should not be allowed because as per the NC standards all the variable declaration must be right after the block starts so our block starts over here the main function and right after the block starts all our declaration must be done so after the printf you should not declare any variables so let us see whether it gives you an error so let us first compile it with without the pedantic errors and you see it is saying unused variable x that means it is not giving me the error that I need so if I remove this W all so it compiles the program successfully so if I add the pedantic errors now pedantic errors and if I compile this now it says ISO C90 for bits mixed declaration of code so int x equal to 5 is not allowed so finally the flags that we normally use to compile the program in C is GCC hello.c the minus o flag is used to output the file to a particular file name minus ANSI to uh, use the ANSI standards the minus pedantic errors is used to follow the ANSI standards strictly and w all is used 
to show errors and warning as well so this finishes with our GCC compiler installation and using it as a ANSI compiler thank you